located at 429C Street. This is the September 17th meeting. Uh, please silence all electronic devices as a courtesy to those in attendance. Thank you. If you could please stand for the invocation by Chaplain Robert Davis and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. With bowed heads, oh God, we thank you and praise you for this day that you've given us. And oh God, we ask you, Lord, to bless this meeting, oh God, bless this gathering, oh God, that we accomplish all that needs to be accomplished. Oh God, bless each and every individual here. And oh God, we do thank you and praise you for this day. We give you glory, honor, and all of the praise in your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for the liberty and justice for all. Council Member Garza? Here. Council Member Lyons? Here. Here. Council Member Orth? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Gornick? Here. Mayor Matthews? Present. Thank you. Moving on to agenda approval additions and or deletions. I just have one change on item 4-7 um, on the routeware master sales and license agreement. The agenda items have payment terms of net 10, but they will be net 30. So I just want to put that out for this slight change once it's approved. Thank you. Um, we have no study session today. Public comment. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. This time is reserved for members of the audience to address the council on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within subject matter jurisdiction of the council. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each, and it is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The council is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda. Prior to addressing the council, any handouts for council will be provided to the city clerk for distribution to the council and appropriate staff. The public will have an opportunity to comment on items on the agenda once the item has been called and the mayor opens the item to the public. Is there any public comment? I would like to make a, before public comments, I'd like to make a comment. In recognition of uh, September 17th, anybody know what that is? It's our Constitution Day. Oh, that's right. And uh, it's uh, it's when we in 1720-something, I think, or whatever, we developed the Constitution. It's our, our the individual signed the Constitution. And the Tenth Amendment is the reason we're sitting here tonight, which has to do with states' rights. Uh, we sometimes think that we have these rights uh, because of the federal government, but it's because of our Constitution that we have rights as states. And those rights are passed on from our legislature to our local communities. And, and uh, we're living the constitution as we speak tonight. And so I think it's appropriate that we hear from the public. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right. uh, Edward Miller, I'm the city's water conservation officer. And uh, as my part of my job, I get to go around the community a lot and interact with a lot of the public. And one thing that had been brought to my attention was for food trucks. If you go throughout our neighborhoods, you'll see a lot of residents that have food trucks and they're looking for business because, you know, with COVID and it stopped a lot of things that they're interested in doing and we've been trying to get them with events. You know, we were at the flag football get, event, giving out free popcorn and we held a rifle for the kids. Um, and a lot of these people that have these food trucks were like places where they can have these food trucks and have business. And my understanding is I don't think they're really allowed here in the city. Um, but a comment was made if the city could look into it, maybe give them, you know, 10 or 20 permits and see how it goes. Couldn't hurt anything. I know local businesses that might not like that, but um, there's lots in the city where businesses could rent out spaces for these food trucks and get income themselves. And then we can also give business to these local people that have these food trucks and allow them to um, perhaps grow. Maybe, you know, I know from previous jobs that I've had, um, Hispanic families will have a food truck and they'll just save the money and save the money. And eventually they will use that money to actually build a restaurant for themselves um, in the future and their family will continue to run it. But I just wanted to bring that up to council for something to consider in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank that you. is actually something that we are currently working on. So 
you you can tell people that when you when they bring it up. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and move on. Ceremonial presentation, item 2-1, Employee of the Month, August 2024. Mr. Rivera. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members, City Manager, audience. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm glad that we are now recognizing our outstanding employees, uh, which have given so much time and hard work to the citizens of Lamar. Um, tonight, I want to congratulate Nick Machado with his months with it, with this month's Employee of the Month. The city of Lemoore is fortunate to have a man like Nick. Um, Nick has been employed with the city for 27 years, almost almost as long as I have Nick. You're right on my heels. Started as a maintenance worker and was promoted to senior maintenance worker in 2007. Promoted a coordinator in 2010, and his current position as superintendent in 2022. Um, some of the uh, the reasons in his in his uh, in the nominations um, are as follows, and I agree, he is everywhere and anywhere that he is needed. No job is too big or too small for him and his crew. Everything is important, and he he bends backwards to get it done. Um, he doesn't complain and is always pleasant. Great supervisor. He doesn't ask anyone to do anything that he isn't ready or willing to do himself. And that's so true of Nick. So I even hate, hate to call Nick and ask him to do something because it, it, I feel like he's going to drop it right then and there and go address it. But I'm like, no, put in your schedule and... And uh, when you have time to do it, unless it's emergency. But yeah, we we really do appreciate Nick. Nick, all the stuff, all you do for us. And um, and your wife, who probably uh, spends evenings uh, can't listen to your phone ring or weekends, uh, you being away. But um, anyway, um, thank you for your service here, Nick. We, we really do appreciate it. And we have um, that for you. So good. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to go down this? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. The humble man that he is, he does not want to give a speech. <laughs> <laughs> But he's actually going out the door. That's how much he doesn't want to give a speech. Okay. Uh, department and city manager reports. I have none. I believe that the is there a microphone there? It's okay. Yeah. Hey. Oh, now it's off. It's not on. Well, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, our PAL program is back up and running. The after school program uh, is also up and running. That takes place on Mondays um, for the after school tutoring program. That runs from 150 to 250. And then the uh, workouts go from three to four. And then on Wednesdays, it's just the workout at three to four. If anybody's looking to uh, join, uh, the students can go to their um, youth development officers, or just come down to the police department. Uh, Red Ribbon Week is scheduled for October 28th. We will be uh, going to each school um, throughout the week, participating in different activities and uh, providing demonstrations. And then during that same week is National Night Out, scheduled for October 29th at Heritage Park, beginning at 4 p.m. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. I believe Ray and Frank also had something. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Council. I uh, hope everybody's doing well tonight. A uh, quick update on the building division. Uh, DDs will be calling in for an inspection tomorrow for their uh, switch gear. So, um, yeah, so hopefully everything got installed correctly and uh, we'll be good there and they're continuing moving on. So, where they're going to be located? I'm sorry, what's Gateway that? Plaza. Yes. <clears throat> Used to be Pioneer Square. Yeah. Okay. You know, kind of over towards the uh, end where the other building where the L shape is right there. It used to be Sprouts Ritz. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now you're showing your age. <laughs> yeah. Any questions on that? No, we're good. Um, do the, you don't know when they are estimated to open? Do you? I've no. been getting that question a lot. Yeah, I uh, we've asked and they haven't given us anything yet. The hard part's over, right? The switch gear? Well, yeah, the, the hardest part okay. that they were waiting on, they got power, yes, everything's good that way. So if everything's connected correctly, that part of it will be completed. I know they've uh, sheet rocked. I think they have their T-bar left and uh, whatever miscellaneous items on the okay. list. So hopefully soon. Um, recreation. We had flag football opening day was uh, this past Saturday, September 14th. We had a great turnout, and um, I'd like to thank the following people. I'd like to thank the Lamore Police Department. Thank you, Chief. Um, guys were out there. They brought the truck that uh, hadn't seen that thing in a long time. It was pretty cool seeing it out there, the uh, Humvee that we have. And uh, I want to thank uh, the building maintenance department, Nick Machado and his staff. They did a really great job out there. They got the fields all prepped. They spray paint every week for us. So they do an outstanding job on that. So I'd like to thank them for that. Um, i also like to thank the uh, gas union. Uh, Ed was out there with gas people. And so he was doing popcorn and prizes and talking. I don't know exactly what you yeah, were talking about. Club, and then they, they club. Okay. So thank you for that. We appreciate that. And then, of course, the mayor who was out there. So it was, uh, it was a great time. Um, Amazing seeing the kids, seeing the talent. Um, we Again, we had over 410 kids uh, signed up with more on the waiting list. But yeah, that's all we could handle right now. Um, the next thing I have is I want to remind everybody that we have coming up to the 100-year time capsule. Um, opening celebration will be September 26th from 4 to 6 p.m. It will be held here at the old City Hall building and also the fire department. The old city hall building is 119 Fox Street. And of course, fire department's 210 Fox Street. So um, everybody's, please come out. That'd be nice to see all the council members out there. Um, an update, we, the city has signed contracts with Junior MBA and also MLS Major League Soccer. So we're waiting for all the uh, details to get worked out. So we're getting closer and closer on that. So it's very exciting. So we're happy to get that going here shortly. And uh, the last I have on my list is that uh, the bleacher did a arrive last week. We got it in and I notified all the service clubs. And so what they want to do is they're talking about coming in and helping Nick and his guys assemble it. They want to be involved, which is outstanding. So I thought that was pretty cool. So that's it. Yes. Question. <clears throat> what do you estimate the completion date on Mavericks? They had estimated March of next year, of okay. 25. That's what they're anticipating. Shooting for them. Depending on weather and stuff, but they're moving along pretty quickly. Yeah, they are. And I want to steal too much because that's Frank's got something like that. I want, you know, oh. He takes my thunder, but I won't take his. So. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, he'll give you an update on what's going on, I'm sure, with, uh, okay. with them. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rivera. No, it's his turn to. Yeah. Answer the question. <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Frank? Yeah, I got a little bit <laughs> offsite improvements. So yeah, so the sewer main is they're almost to the tie-in point. They're probably about thirty feet from tying into the their their point of connection. 
Uh, next, they'll be they'll be um, running their laterals onto their property, and then building manholes, and then doing. Uh, there's like three water connections that they that are part of their project. Um, so yeah, like Ray said, they they told us also like March would be their uh, completion dirt, uh, completion date. Uh, if you look, they moved a lot of a lot of dirt. They've yeah. already built their pad, and and I think they're digging out their basin um, adjacent to the the highway. So yeah, they're they're moving pretty good. So on that on that uh, on that south or excuse me that north west corner there where they're they're going to occupy that. What's what do you hear? What's going on with the cement uh, operation on the south side? With the cement, uh, I have not heard anything about that that business at all. So we'll have curb and gutter on the north side. So we're going to have to pick up a. Uh, we're 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 constantly seeking uh, grants and stuff to to tie in curb and gutter. So um, what, 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 we, what do you mean we're going to have to get grants? They're going to aren't they? Isn't that part of their? Uh, yeah, typically uh, the developer, um, whatever is along their frontage is what they're responsible for. So everything on the on the north side of Iona, right. Will be done by by uh, Mavericks, and then as the developer who sold the property to the east of him does his development, he will continue on. There's also another small um, uh, there. It's a commercial um, uh, development that's being uh, built by Tony Rodriguez. He's doing a little site just to the east of uh, Mavericks, also. So a lot of the curb and gutter will get done. Um, as projects progress, but that's all happening on the north side of the, of the street. Um, so we couldn't put it in and then just put we, a lien on we, the property for the amount that they pay us back when they... on the south side. No, on the north oh, side. On the north side. Yeah. Um. Uh, I just. Yeah. yeah. I. <laughs> it yeah. just looks so chopped up when we don't do it. Like yeah. That. Yeah, but like, but um, yeah, I think I mentioned to you we we did receive a a, a grant for um Nineteenth Avenue. Uh, from Cinnamon, just past the PG&E, the old, old PG&E building, we're going to be putting in curb gutter, sidewalk, and widening the road in that strip. So that'll happen next summer sometime. So we'll, we'll you know, pieces that we see that are that are um, that are uh, maybe attractable for you know development. A lot, a lot of the stuff we seek though are either like a safe route to school uh, grant, so it has to be connected right. to a school. So Right. We'd have to find a story of, of why we need money, you know, for yeah. sidewalk on, on Iona on the south side. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Anything Thank else you. with that? Uh, the, um, the other, uh, we, the, the uh, 2024 uh, road maintenance project, phase one is underway. They're replacing, uh, they removed trees, uh, curb gutter and sidewalk that were disrupted by the trees in the PFMD zone two, which is like Jubilee. Uh, constitution in that area the contractor is 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 working on that ahead of the uh the fibers the slurry uh project that's coming up um uh, end of the month and into next month um so that's progressing pretty well and then we uh started uh, yesterday installing the arsenic pipe over at wall site number 11 it's about 400 feet of uh above ground 12 inch pipe so hopefully by the end of the by um uh, end of the week it's installed and then we'll have to go through the flushing of that and making sure that it passes uh, its bacteria uh, uh, requirement. So that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You had nothing, Marissa? Okay. Um, moving on to, sorry, I wrote all over my paper. Uh, consent calendar items considered routine in nature are placed on the consent calendar. They'll be considered and voted upon in one vote as one item unless a council member or member of the public requests individual consideration. Item 4-1, approval minutes, regular meeting, September 3rd, 2024. 4-2, approval revisions to the salary schedule for addition of reserve emergency dispatchers. 4-3, approval resolution 2024-28, biannual review of conflict of code of interest. 4-4, approval denial of claim for Ms. Cruz. 4-5, approval denial of claim for Mr. Walker. 4-6, approval denial of claim for Mr. Hutton. 4-7, approval Routeware Inc. Master Sales and License Agreement. 
4-8, approval budget amendment and position allocation amendment for addition of finance director. That is all of them. Is there any of those items that uh, your council would like to pull? Seeing none, is there any of those items that the public would like to pull? Seeing none, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion to approve Problem. the consent calendar. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Garza and a second by Council Member Gornick. Council Member Garza? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Yes. Council Member Lyons? Yes. Council Member Orth? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Passes 5 0. Moving on to new business, item 6 1 report and recommendation appointment of voting delegate to League of California Cities annual conference. Marissa, are you going to take this? I am. Okay. So this item is asking the council to appoint a voting delegate for the League of California Cities annual conference. Um, at this time, the mayor is the only council member registered to attend. So my recommendation would be to appoint the mayor as your voting delegate. I is second. is, I second. is, it, I is second. there another option? Can we not have a voting delegate? I'm no. just kidding. Nope, you gotta go. All right. Just, it's on record. I'm taking one this time for y'all. Take them off with the team. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so do we need a consensus or do we need a, we actually need a vote, right? You do need a vote. Right. Okay. Motion so, to I've accept been... you as the uh, delegate for League of Cities. Second. A motion by Council Member Orth and a second by Council Member Gornick. Council Member Orth? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Yes. Council Member Garza? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Lyons? Yes. And I vote. Yes. Passes by vote. Uh, item 6-2, report and recommendation, rec recommend and authorize city position for the 2024 League of California Cities Annual Conference Resolution. Ms. Trejo. Thank you. So now that you have decided that the mayor will be your voting delegate, she needs to know how to vote on the resolution that the League has um, as their voting item for this conference. So they have one resolution this year. It's the fair and equal treatment of all governmental officials at all levels, which was submitted by the city of Glendora. Staff is recommending that you uh, ask the mayor to vote in favor of that resolution. It's basically asking the state to hold all elected officials to the same standards that they hold local elected officials. You mean they don't do that, no? No, they don't. No, they do not. Do an example? It's mostly on ethics issues. Yeah. Okay. Motion to accept, uh, recommend authorization city position for the 2024 League of Cities annual conference resolution. So in, in favor of the resolution? In favor of it, yes. Second. I have a motion by Council Member Orth and a second by Council Member Garza. Council Member Orth? Yes. Council Member Garza? Yes. Council Member Lyons? Yes. Council Member Gornick? Yes. And I vote yes as well. That one is 5 0 as well. <clears throat> city Council reports and requests. Council member, I'm going to go in a different order. Council member Orth. I'll probably forget one of you, but. Uh, I'm good right now. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you throw them off. Council member Lyons. Um, I would like to go ahead and congratulate Nick Machado. And uh, that's all I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing everybody out. Council member Gornick. Uh, I want to congratulate our uh, new city manager, uh, as well as Nick. Uh, for his his award, but our city manager, uh, I noticed that we have a finance position on the budget that, that we just approved, and uh, I think that's a good move for on our part to uh, move us forward. And I appreciate your quick action and attention to that that matter. Um, I do, um, <clears throat> you know, there's been a lot of uh, news lately about. Uh, uh, different individuals being uh, from different countries being moved into smaller cities. And I, I guess at a future date, I'd like to have a a meeting with the sheriff as well as our uh, uh, police department um, to understand the relationship with, with respect to uh, our law enforcement agencies and ICE with respect to uh, that kind of stuff. So I'd, I'd hate to see that happening in, in California. Some of these cities get overrun, their schools, their hospitals, uh, and 
Uh, it seems like some of these cities are surprised. So I'd like to know what our what our response is. And I know you guys got to be talking about it in your in your confines. So I think it's important to have a discussion uh, with the communities at large in terms of what our responses are. So anyway. Thank you, sir. Just a thought. Oh, okay. Mr. Lyons. I'm sorry. I, I, I did one else. Turn my mic off. I also wanted to congratulate Ms. Trejo and, you know, welcome you aboard again, like Frank said, but I forgot to mention that the um, Commission on Aging this Friday on the 20th, they have their senior picnic. And I think Frank's going to be Elvis and it's <laughs> going to be from nine to one thirty at the. at um, Burris Park. Burris Park. Yes. So I just wanted to remind everybody of that. Thank you. What are you dressing up as? Oh, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Council Member Garza. I just want to thank uh, Frank for the history lesson before uh, we start with the baby today. And congratulate Nick and our new city managers. Well, now I feel bad. I want to congratulate our city manager and Nick. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to her for, on the phone for an hour today, so. <laughs> I don't think it worked, Council Member Garza. We'll just go with the status quo. Um, was that it? Okay. <clears throat> um, so now it's your turn. Yeah, I know. Get ready. Buggle up. Um, so I did attend the tail end of the reception for our new city manager, which I heard was very well attended, which is part of the course for our city. I think um, they want to be involved and they want to come get to know you. So I'm glad that you had a good welcome. Um, being on the KCAO board, I was able to tour the Sunrise Apartments in Hanford, which is a, their permanent housing. Um, so I did take a tour of that. They're very nice. Um, obviously, everything's new. So um, it seems like a very good project that, uh, moving forward. Um, <clears throat> I also virtually attended the South, South San Joaquin Valley Division Executive Board meeting for um, the League of Cities. Uh, so they will be bringing... Well, none of you guys are going to be there, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I'll tell, tell myself. Um, they're going to be bringing, I don't remember what the entity is, um, but they're going to be talking about water. Um, they're trying to bring that to the annual conference. And we we had suggested as an executive board that they make that, because water is so important to our area and California in general, that that be an ongoing meeting that they add to the annual conference. So we're hoping that that, that continues and that converse, conversation continues to be had because I think it affects us all. Um, I did attend the flag football um, opening ceremonies, which was very well attended. And I have to say that not only do we have great kids out there putting their best on the field, but we also have great parents that are very sportsmanlike and cheer for the teams. And it's just a good atmosphere. If you haven't been, I recommend just going and checking out one game, two games, just um, seeing what it's all about. So um, it was a it was a great time. I spent more time down there than I had planned, but it was good. It was fun. Um, and people come from all over to attend our rec sports. So I think that that just um, to to say something about our rec department that um, you guys are second to none and, and it shows because people are coming from everywhere. Um, I also attended the Kings County Homeless Collaborative meeting on Monday. Um, they're continuing to move forward with the different, the different entities that are part of that collaborative or moving forward with their outreach um, that each of them do individually and trying to collaborate a calendar on exactly what every entity is doing and when so that they could be more effective. Um, also, they're moving forward with their projects, the, the Sunrise Apartments. Um, they're waiting for the magical switch gear. Um, they unfortunately have no date in sight. They, their last date was August. Obviously that's passed and now they're not giving them a date at all. So that's all that whole project is waiting for to get moving and going. Um, so if anybody has one in their back pocket, I'm sure they would love to buy that from you. Um, Triangle Quartz is moving forward. They had a little snafu. Um, so that's still moving forward. And also still continuing to move forward on the KCAO low barrier shelter that's going to be located in Hanford. Today at the Board of Supervisors meeting, the county decided to transfer ownership of Sunrise Apartments to KCAO. So KCAO, KCAO will be the ones running and owning that um, permanent housing project. Um, that was already talked about. Um, I just want to also um, congratulate Mr. Machado for his exemplary work 
Um, I think we have a lot of great employees and I'm so excited to see that we're bringing back employee of the month and employee recogni recognition. Thank you for helping to bring that back. I think that's huge. Um, and also I want to thank um, our city manager Trejo for all her hard work so far um, and all the hard work that she's going to continue to do. And I also want to wish our fellow council member, David Orth, a happy birthday, early happy birthday, but just wanted to put that out there. What's your birthday? Saturday. I won't ask the next one. <laughs> How old are you? Too. <laughs> um, so with that, I will go ahead and go into closed session. We have item one, government code section 54957, public employee performance evaluation, city manager. Item two, government code section 54956.9, conference with legal counsel, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to paragraph two or three of subdivision D of section 54956.9, one case. Item three, government code section 54956.9, conference with legal counsel, anticipated, anticipated litigation, initiation of litigation pursuant to paragraph four of subdivision D, of section 59569, one case. So we'll go ahead and turn into, adjourn into closed session.